The 2014 epic historical action film 300 Rise of an Empire is based on Frank Miller's graphic novel Xerxes and is a follow-up to the 2007 film 300, taking place before, during and after the main events of that film and is loosely based on the Battle of Artemisium and the Battle of Salamis. But how true to the historical events is this entertaining movie? The movie opens with Queen Gorgo of Sparta telling her men about the Battle of Marathon, in which King Darius of Persia was killed by Themistocles of Athens. Darius' son, Xerxes, witnesses his father's death and is advised never to rage war against the Greeks. This is a bad start historically. The Athenian general Themistocles was indeed a real person who was present at the Battle of Marathon, but he never mortally wounded the Persian king Darius. In fact, Darius was not killed as depicted and neither he nor Xerxes were present at the Battle of Marathon. In truth, after becoming aware of the Persian defeat at the Battle of Marathon, Darius began planning another expedition against the Greek city-states. This time, he himself would be in command of the imperial armies, and he even went as far as ordering a slave to whisper in his ear on regular occasions, O oh, great king, do not forget the Athenians. Darius had spent three years preparing his men and ships for war when a revolt broke out in Egypt. This revolt worsened his failing health and prevented the possibility of his leading another army. Soon afterwards, Darius died in October 486 BC. The movie also portrays Darius's naval commander, Artemisia, incorrectly. She is seen to persuade Xerxes to become a god and sends him on a journey through the desert. Her backstory has shown that she was born a Greek but defected to Persia after her family was raped and murdered by Greek hoplites. After being rescued and adopted by a Persian emissary, she was trained and eventually rose up to become a naval commander. The real Artemisia is mostly known through the writings of the historian Herodotus. Her father was the satrap of Halicarnassus, Lydamus I, and her mother was from the island of Crete, and she took the throne after the death of her husband. Artemisia historically was a queen, and not an abused orphan slave. In the movie, Themistocles travels to Sparta for aid against the Persians, suggesting that Sparta was the acknowledged power on both land and sea. The truth is that in 481 BC, a congress of Greek city-states was held, during which they agreed to ally themselves against the forthcoming Persian invasion. The Spartans and the Athenians were the foremost in this alliance, being sworn enemies of the Persians. The Spartans claimed the command of the land forces, and since the Greek fleets would be dominated by Athens, Themistocles tried to command the naval force. However, the other naval powers, including Corinth and Aegina, refused to give command to the Athenians and Themistocles pragmatically backed down. Instead, as a compromise, the Spartans, an insignificant naval power, were to command the naval forces, though the historian Herodotus is clear that Themistocles commanded the fleet in all but name. The Battle of Artemisium is portrayed in a fantasy style for dramatic entertainment. In truth, approaching Artemisium towards the end of summer, the Persian navy was caught in a gale off the coast of Magnesia and lost around a third of their 1,200 ships. After arriving at Artemisium, the Persians sent a detachment of 200 ships around the coast of Euboea to trap the Greeks, but these were caught in another storm and shipwrecked. The main action of the battle took place two days after the smaller engagements. The two sides fought all day with roughly equal losses. However, the smaller allied fleet could not afford the losses. After the engagement, 
the Allies received news of the defeat of the army at Thermopylae. Since their strategy required both Thermopylae and Artemisium to be held, and given their losses, the Allies decided to withdraw to Salamis. In the movie, Artemisia is impressed with Themistocles and brings him onto her ship where she attempts to lure him to the Persian side as her second in command, but he refuses her offer. This never really happened. Themistocles then returns to Athens and confronts Aphialtes, who reveals that Xerxes plans to attack and burn Athens. Aphialtes regrets his betrayal and welcomes death, but is spared so he can warn Xerxes that the Greek forces are gathering at Salamis. Themistocles visits Gorgo in Sparta and asks for aid, but Gorgo is mourning Leonidas' death and refuses. Before departing, Themistocles returns Leonidas' sword, which had been delivered to him by Aphialtes under Xerxes' orders, and urges Gorgo to avenge him. In reality, Aphialtes was never sent as an envoy to Athens. He expected to be rewarded for his treachery by the Persians, but this came to nothing when they were defeated at the Battle of Salamis. He then fled to Thessaly, and according to the historian Herodotus, he was killed by Athenidas of Treches around 470 BC. Back to the movie, in Athens, Xerxes' army is laying waste to the city when Aphialtes arrives to deliver Themistocles' answer. Upon learning he is alive, Artemisia leaves to ready her navy for battle. Themistocles inspires all of his remaining forces to continue fighting. The remaining Greek ships charge into the Persian ships, beginning the decisive battle of Salamis. Themistocles and Artemisia engage in a duel which ends in a stalemate, with both receiving severe injuries. Artemisia tries to kill Themistocles, but he stabs her, killing her. In truth, Artemisia argued against sailing into the straits and survived the Persian Wars. Gorgo then arrives at the battle, along with the ships from numerous Greek city-states, including Delphi, Thebes, Olympia, Arcadia and Sparta, all uniting against the surrounded Persians. Xerxes, watching the battle from a cliff, turns his back on Artemisia, acknowledging his naval defeat and continuing the march of his army. Themistocles and Gorgo then charge at the Persians with the entire Greek army. Historically this is incorrect as the Spartan navy contributed a mere 16 warships to the Greek fleet of 400 warships, rather than the huge armada shown, and Queen Gorgo was not present. 300 Rise of an Empire is not to be taken as a history documentary, and is itself based upon a graphic novel, which in turn is based upon historical events, and should be taken merely as an entertaining movie.